When many people hear the phrase survival of the fittest, their minds are instinctively drawn to the ideas of strength and competition. While this connection isn't uncommon, and while it is appropriate in some cases, it isn't the right way to think about survival of the fittest or evolution. This is because when you limit the word fittest to mean physical fitness, you ignore many of the important, impressive, and perhaps not so obvious adaptive and evolutionary traits that have led to the diverse ecosystem we live in today. I mean, just look at the sloth. It isn't exactly the icon of strength and speed. Still, it survived this far. So, if we view evolution without a focus on strength, speed, or just competition in general, then how does evolution happen? And where did all this talk of survival of the fittest even begin? Let's start with where people tend to go wrong. While it may be linked closely to the theory of evolution, the phrase survival of the fittest wasn't actually coined by Charles Darwin. In reality, it was made popular by a man named Herbert Spencer, and he actually came up with the term years before Darwin published his theory of evolution. As it turns out, Spencer's views weren't exactly the most humanitarian. Spencer thought that Darwin's evolutionary theory could also be applied to economic theory. Herbert Spencer is credited with initiating the philosophy we now, perhaps ironically, call social Darwinism. This name, when combined with Spencer's meaning of survival of the fittest, is the origin for so much misinformation surrounding the theory of evolution. Spencer believed that by taking care of the poor, the elderly, and the sick, humanity does itself a disservice by, in his words, favoring the multiplication of those worst fitted for existence. Because keeping these so-called weak links around led to their weaknesses living on in society for generations to come. In fact, Spencer claimed that any actions which aimed to help these people arose from, in his words, a radically wrong understanding of human existence. Unfortunately, Spencer's famous phrase has led to a radically wrong understanding of science. Organisms don't exist in constant competition. Animals aren't feverishly fighting and killing each other in an attempt to reach the top of some evolutionary or ecological totem pole. In fact, when you view evolution through this competition-centric lens, there are a lot of things in the world that just don't make sense. Think of the first animal that could fly. What did this animal have to compete with? The answer is that it didn't have to compete. But if there wasn't competition, then what drove evolution? The answer to that lies in the idea of niches. As animals learn to fly, they continue to get better at flying. One study, published in PLOS 1, found that in a simulated environment where competition didn't exist, evolution still occurred as organisms developed niches. So, instead of viewing the world through a competitive perspective, Try looking at how organisms cooperate. Instead of fighting each other for some number one spot on the food chain, organisms work in conjunction with each other, cooperating and using our niches to coexist and maintain a sense of ecological stability. This can be seen when you look at the famous mutualist relationship of the pilotfish and the shark. Newsflash, sharks eat other fish. But, the pilot fish has a niche that allows it to say, hey, Mr. Shark, if you don't eat me, and if you scare off other predators, I can eat the organisms that are on you and are causing you some trouble. What do you say? Thus, the two species cooperate and help each other thrive. This concept can also be seen in your body. Your cells aren't competing with each other for the title of champion cell. They work together each type of cell having its own niche and function as a whole to keep your body working. This focus on niches and cooperation not only paints a more reasonable picture of how evolution and ecosystems work, it also makes for a better model of how we as humans should treat each other in society. There's nothing wrong with a little competition. It has its place both in nature and in society. But if we really want to thrive, we need to identify and refine our personal strengths, 
and find others whom we can work with to improve our situation and maintain our happiness. Mm -hmm.